阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀，阿弥陀，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀，阿弥陀，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀。Last week we talk about the、uh, effect of lust on, you know, on our society nowadays. The prevalence of, you know, the lack of controls, lack of、um, a clear set of rules in terms of、uh, how we should conduct a relationship between male and female. It's not realistic for us to expect that kind of、um, control back in our society、um, nowadays. All we can do right now is to bring ourselves. Hold ourselves accountable. Understand the consequences.、Uh, do the homework by ourselves. Understand the consequences、uh, by ourselves, and prevent it if we can.、Uh, there's no way you can turn around turn around the entire environment like this. It's like what the scientists say: entropy. Once you go from order to chaos,、uh, you you need to have go like it's very hard to go back. So. With that out of the mind, then when we look at this thing, it's just a matter of how we、uh, adjust our mindset in terms of you know our relationship with the opposite genders and or whatever genders you're attracted to. The whole point is to be courteous, understand、uh, each other's in depth before we、uh, engage in、uh, any kind of、um, events. Because if we jump the gun, the only person who will suffer is not just you. Your partner and also your parents, your friends, your children, and eventually, you know, your other aspect of your life will suffer. You know, your career and stuff. So, this is a huge thing, and this is a pivot of a person's success or failure, because、uh, you have already seen in real case, and I believe it's quite、um, obvious. Scandals happen, and ten out of eight out of ten scandals. Mostly has to do with、yeah. extramarital affair or you know sexual misconduct or you know committing that kind of、um, misdeeds outside the、um, acceptable you know conduct、um, and even nowadays the standards of the world cannot be used so we just need to be careful、um, and you know align ourselves with the best possible、um, path. All right. No matter what kind of path we choose, whatever name you put on top of it, you choose a path when you decide a, a certain action, and that action will be a、uh, bear fruit. So this case, same goes with this one.、Um, understandably, we have a structural problem in terms of how we're born into this world because of lustful thoughts and you know parents and they have that, and then we born into this world. But that is not an excuse to entertain it like、um, animal.、Uh, there's a reason why we're born in as a human because we have our、uh, semblance of any morals and controls. You know,、uh, there's line you do not cross. You know, there's things you do not touch.、Uh, otherwise, you fell further down in your lower three rims. And in our context nowadays, it means that we're getting more and more hideous in our. Thoughts and actions. You don't even need to do it, say it. Just think about it. It's already disgusting. So how do we purify that thought? Understand it. Appreciate. Understand it. Understand where it came from.、Uh, understand that the impulse is there. Understand that you know we cannot foolishly suppress it, but we can prevent ourselves. We can you know pick a battle, so to speak. You know the best way to、um, encounter. I mean to overcome this is. To avoid it in the first place, and obviously there are there are cases where you were tested for integrity and stuff, and that is up to you know up to your daily practice, you know. And to be honest, if you have drilled this kind of teaching in your mind and understanding, you know,、um, what's more important, you know, that one five seconds or one hour of joy over you know lifetime of regrets, or you know wait until the right person came along and. Properly form a family, and you can still can have that kind of pleasure in a, you know, moderate way. You know, which one is better, right? And you be you be the judge.、Um, 
because um, one side is you know excitement, chaos, never ending, pleasure, uh, excitement. But the downside, the caveat is it brings a lot of pain and suffering, uh, betrayals and all that. Um, the other side is you know patience, and, um, how do I say restraint, but at the same time um, moderate, middle path. You know don't overindulge, but uh, just enough to you know have a, a, a good healthy uh, life as a, a married life so you know middle path is the way to in terms of this for lay Buddhists obviously entire different case if you're pursuing monastic path that is um hundred percent you know immersed into the Buddha teaching um, so without going to um, you know because I already spent whole session on that one so we're gonna move on to this the last part you know la, uh, um, second phrases uh, to wish your creditors debt so as to not to pay them back it's pretty obvious uh, you know that's very childish thinking because lacking understanding of karma uh, all debt must be paid if this is not something um, not nothing you have to pay your debt that's, there's no way you can avoid it. Either you pay your debt or your children pay your debt, pay the debt. And even if you die, you still have to pay the debt. Uh, there are many ways to make you pay the debt. And um, the best way is while you're conscious, alive, able to take it, take it the hardship, um, grinding through it, going through the process. Obviously, it's painful, it's suffering, you know, losing your wealth, losing stuff. But if you owe people stuff, rather you be poor and trying to pay back than um, avoiding it. You know, accumulating the interest uh, of the debt you owe them, and ended up having to pay even more. So there's no other way around it, other than you know, earnestly trying to return the favor, return the debt. So there's two factors to this. First one is do not try to avoid owing people debt. Try to avoid that situation in the first place. Just like the previous one, pick your battle. All right, it already is half the outcome. All right, in the military terms, you know the location, the geographies, where you pick your battle is half the outcome. So as your cultivation, you know if you if you fall into that trap, you know like you know maybe owe people money or owe people a lot of favors. right? Favors, not just money. Um, have to pay back, you know. Like people give you ten dollars of uh, convenience, you need to give them fifteen, twenty. Always have that sense, uh, sound of mind, because number one, you don't owe people. Number two, you improve the relationship with them. Um, never take advantage of people. Never trying to undercut people because it's stupid. It's utterly um, stupid in terms of you have no returns. You know, all these returns is like. It's like spending on credit card, running away to another country, thinking that you'll be safe. But when push comes to shove, you you need to pay for it one day. You know, the, 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 the credit record and all that will, will always be there. In this case, it's not just country's credit record. Your own credit record is stored in your own consciousness. The alaya consciousness, if you remember what I talk about. The eight consciousness. So... That thing will chase you for the rest of your existence. Doesn't matter what kind of existence you have, you know, or whatever theories you engage in, multiverse or anything. Those kind of things, it, it, the origin is the same, you know. Your your eight consciousness will always come out. You will always have to pay the money or pay the favors. There are many kinds of ways to pay the favors, you know. There are worst possible way and a better way. It depends on how you incur the debt in the first place, right? So. Not only that you don't want to pay back the debt, but uh, this person not want to pay back the debt, you also wish them to die, wish them pass away so that you don't have to, um, you know, you don't have debt collection. That is, uh, how to say, that is putting yourself in a, between a rock and a hard place. It is, or forcing yourself going further down the drain of, you know, suffering, right? Buddha talked about Four Noble Truth, right? Suffering, cause of suffering, Ku Ji Mie Tao, the cessation of suffering and the you know, the path of, to cease the suffering and then the end of sufferings. We're doing the opposite. 
by having that kind of thought. You know, I wish you die, I wish you pass away, I wish you know this person will you know suddenly have a issues or anything. Because that is jiao xin the dao That is the mindset of you know trying to you know play with luck. You know, thinking is luck, chance. But to be honest, nothing nothing escapes. Um, to be honest, nothing escapes yourself. Nothing escapes your own sense of your own justice. You know, those things are manifested from your from your consciousness. All right. From, lack of a better word mind but it's not just mind it's actually consciousness the ability to create the world that we're living in now as we are um, even though it's fake you still feel it very real like you know like when you watch a scary horror movie you know it's fake but when push comes to shove and that shock factor come out especially if a director is very good at this you still shock run away cry like drama as well like you know, comedy as well. You know it's not real or anything, but you still laugh with them, you still cry with them. And it feels very real. Like in a dream, right? You you, you sometimes when I felt you falling, I have a lot of that kind of dream. Of course I know it's fake, but, but when I'm in a dream, I don't know it's fake. So when I fell, I actually literally felt. So my body will do the jerk reaction trying to maintain balance and then I woke up. Then I know it's a dream. Using this moment, Analogy, I hope it's easier to understand. This thing is not uh, a joking matter in the sense of, I mean, it's funny if you look at it when you awake, but when you're in it, it's really like painful. And because you have to pay the debt, you know, like in what way, say, you know, you owe people that much money, you need to pay them by overworking or getting through this very worst condition in work and then still have to work triple times of other people's workload for half of the paid. It's obvious paying the wages. You're paying off your debt. In other way, the paying the debt is in um, this case, this context of talking about money. It's more um, straightforward, right? Um, yeah, I, I think I already mentioned the important point is trying to take advantage of people, undercut people. Uh, better stick to the um, point. Um, so yeah, do not um, do not sacrifice your future for what is a meager, meager m e a g r e meager um, benefit. You know those things are those things are like calm before the storm, or you know the um, like tsunami. Before the tsunami, everything looks calm. The water recede. Looks like everything's fine. But and then tsunami hits. So so does you know, trying to have advantage over other people uh, in an unjust way. And never do that. Uh, be fair, be open, understand why you have to pay this and um, pay it willingly. Um, you might get lesser now, but at least you're not incurring debt. That means you get lesser, but you're still moving upwards slowly. It's just a bit slower. Always repay and pay more than you than you receive. Always a little bit more. That way you can improve not just relationship but also, you know, yeah, relationship with other people. And if you have Dharma helping you and you can you, you use this relationship, introduce them to the Dharma path. But um, this kind of mentality is the mentality of animal, to be honest. Ignorance. Because not lacking understanding of how 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 things work, you know how the world works, and um, in essence, it's always give and take in the world, in 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 in, in a simplest, always simplifying way, saying that it's all about give and take in this world. Um, huan, and you know, if we get too serious about give and take, being becomes the Chinese word say huan de huan is always worry about give and take. But any interaction is all about give and take, right? You give in the time to, in your work place you take the salary to have your quality of life ensured in the basic way and you give you know your, your attention to your partners or your friends so that you investing in this relationship so that you're you know um, you both can get happiness out of this companionship right those things are uh, like not 
hardly transactional, not like strictly transactional, but it's just like air, like gravity is how it works, right? Obviously, we should not encourage this kind of transactional thinking, but if we look at it in a very, I say, simple, um, empirical way, you know, like you said, you look at it as is, it is give and take. Right, the parents as well give a lot of time and love and care. If they do that, most likely, of course, a special case. There's always special case, right? In the past life, maybe, you know, he did really bad. But let's not talk about special case. Normally, if you put in a lot of work, put in a lot of effort in raising your children, setting up good example, you know, work on yourself, you know, then usually your children will become a very healthy person in man, in mind and body, and you will have a healthy relationship with your children. And when they grow up, they will usually, most cases will be taking care of you, repaying your kindness. It's just human nature, right? We always want to give back when we take so many. Um, that's why when people only take without giving back, only know how to take without giving back, they will, they will get lesser and lesser. The more, the more they take, the lesser they get. So the thing they can take from will be less and lesser because it's how the world works. You, if you don't exchange it, you, there is no, there is no increase. There's no increment, right? Um, and, and, uh, you end up, you know, stuck in one place or getting worse. And most of them is guided by, you know, greed, um, ignorance, you not know, understanding how things work, you know, like the art of giving, you know, able to give, the more you give, the more you get. The more you get, the more you give. And this is how it works. And into infinity. It goes into infinity. So, for example, in Buddhism, the Buddha has um, given a lot of talks in, around, you know, what was um, back then, it was um, Nepal, present-day Nepal. And he gives a lot of talk. Not just Nepal, but also the peninsula, the Indian peninsula. One of the places is Gu Du Yuan. I forgot the Sanskrit name, but it was uh, donated by a king, uh, a prince, and a um, a place donated by a prince and a very rich merchant. They built a vihara, a, a place for Buddha to give talks, Dhamma talk. Qi Su Ji Gu Du Yuan. I think Chinese have heard of it, most of them, you know, the Chinese Buddhists. But it's actually translated from uh, uh, Sanskrit. But I forgot the word. Sorry about that. So what I'm trying to get to is the Buddha and his um, students, right? Of course, they continue their business as usual, teaching the sermon and cleaning up the places. When he passed by, he was looking on the ground and there is a swarm of ants, you know, doing their business as well. You know, moving food, moving around, seeking, seeking food. But... You know, such a normal thing, but Buddha looked at them, looked at the ants, and he smiled. He laughed in a, in a way, like, you know, like, like it's like very funny. Like. So everyone was like, Buddha, why do you, you know, smile at, I mean, why do you laugh at the uh, this swarm of ants? Um, so they asked, why? Why is that? You know, because, you know, Buddha don't do anything non nonsensically, right? But, so he said, he tell everyone, um, this particular, this group of ants has been ants since seven Buddha lifetime ago. So seven cycles of Buddha um, existence. So one cycle of Buddha existence takes like eons, right? For lack of a better word, maybe 520,000 thousand, um, years to get one Buddha appearing in the world. Um, so this ants has been seven times of that amount, and they still become ants. So they they never and they never stop being ants for this extra astronomically long period of time. So it is quite funny. Like why would you know how 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 does one get so attached and get so um, unclear? You know so. Um, so lost that they become and for so such a long time and then if you calculate right each Buddha takes uh, three Achaya um, Karpa Asang Chijie 
uh, one Achaya Kappa, maybe like, I don't know how to calculate it, but um, if you want to do mathematics, uh, let's do it. Why not? Why not? Why not? Achari. Arpa. <coughs> Acharya, Acharya. Three parts of Karpa. But, anyway. You know, to give context to this. Um, to be honest, it it's not meant to be, like, calculatable. It's, it's meant to say a long time. So, to make three of them is a very, very, very long time. Um, Asamkya. So that's what they um, have it. So this is the one, and <clears throat> yeah, it's a lot of tens. Okay, square sixty asan chijie, tanda asan chijie. I don't know how how much, maybe ten to the power of uh, fifty six, maybe. 10 to the power of 56, that means there are 56 zeros behind that 10. So um, my whole point is this is a very long time and times three of that kind of time. Uh, and that is how long they have been ends. And um, that's why he say that, you know, they overly attach and that attachment is not small, it's a huge attachment uh, for such a small creature. They attaching to this they thought, yep, that's me, I'm the end, I'm the end. And uh, they, when they die, they're born again to that house. Um, so what we're trying to say here is, you know, obviously there are elements of, you know, owing people stuff as well. And the consequences is something we cannot imagine. Um, not just uh, this life, but many, many lifetimes. Uh, being end is one s such small part of this. Possibilities. Uh, so we all need to be, you know, holding on to our words. You know, uh, our, uh, 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 you are what your words worth. You know, um, uh, put your money where your mouth is. You know, in a in a more straightforward way. You know, put your money to where your mouth is. Act what you say. Uh, if a person do not fulfill their promises, and then they're losing a footing in the society. And if they continue down the path of, you know, deceptions and being deceitful, being vicious, being, you know, like, um, giving rise to anger just because things doesn't go their way, gets, you know, lack, lesser and lesser. You know, this person becomes more lesser and lesser person by the virtue of their own um, character, you know. Um, so we need always need to remind ourselves, like no matter how bad the situation is, you know, promise is a promise. Obviously, there are time and place factors. You might not be able to do it now, but you always will do it one day. Sometimes you just can't do it now, but you will do it one day. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Center of this phrase is about trust, to be honest. Trust, in like, you know, like, can your word be relied upon? You know, can this group of people be relied upon? And if there's no trust, there's no, there's nothing to work on, you know, there's not. There's no no solid foundation in this relationship. That means your interaction has to be very superficial, very surface level. You can't do any meaningful cooperation. You can't do any meaningful um, things together because there's no trust in between them. It's a bridge. It's the land. It's the earth. Now having a human having trust is like a house having a ground to be on. And there's no ground. There's no house human has no trust, he has no standing in the society and he could not even operate. Uh, nowadays we talk about, you know, those financial terms, we talk about how well you pay your debt, right? That's one very narrow way of you understanding it. But it's not a complete picture, right? 
because that one is very transactional, very, you know, chasing money kind of mindset. Beyond that, you know, you want to elevate to the level of, you know, even though you, um, people might just, you know, utter the words without thinking about it. But once you promise them about that, you would do it no matter how small that thing is or how trivial that thing might be. You know, you take it seriously, you actually, you know, cherish this relationship. You actually, you know, do things without asking for anything in return. It's just because you say, say it, you will do it. And then that's it. When you finish, you finish. You don't sit there waiting for praise, waiting for return, waiting for some sort of... That's what I'm saying. If we use the modern financial term, that one is a very narrow, very not even basic level. That one is like, it's a transactional thing. You know, you give money, I give you money. You know, it's it's business, right? But real stuff is not that. Real stuff is, you know, what makes people hearts, you know, touch people's hearts. What actually actually brings the society together is able to, you know, fulfill your promise. Uh, just because you did you promise and you do it, um, uh, out of respect, out of love, out of care like you know volunteering stuff as well you promise and you do it and once you finish do it you 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 um move on with your life all right uh and uh yeah and that's how society you know get better prosper in the real sense not just developing another rocket to mars that one is good but without human element in there it's might as well send robots up there not human up there you get a more peaceful Mars. If you send a bunch of human without proper humanistic education, that you know how to be a decent person, how to you know have a uh, decent um, conduct, and how to be more considerate with one another, right? Without this thing, without trust, without love, without um, without love means able to think on behalf, be considerate of other people, think on the, from their perspective, not just you, you, me, me, me. If human does not have this element, then no matter how well you develop, how advanced you are, you know, it's not gonna last. It's gonna it's gonna cause more harm than good. It's like giving granite, uh, giving I don't know, giving a very dangerous like grenade to monkeys. The monkeys is gonna throw it and bombard the place. All right. So as humans, if we have all these tools and at disposal, but we don't have the wisdom to use it we always follow our desire cravings uh, using the tools to and uh, to to satisfy our own greed our own you know hatred our own ignorance you know like using those technologies to um trying to find a loophole and trying to steal someone's um hard earned money or trying to do the gray side of the law stuff like that it's useless. It's just going to cause more harm to the society. Right? So human relation is human to human relationship is number one in all sorts of development progress. If that thing is gone, if that thing is messy, if that thing is getting more and more, um, how to say, convoluted, then the society does not live too far from the extinction because everyone gets Everyone can do anything. There's no bottom line. There's no consideration of your um, family or and or loved ones. All right. So that's the balance that we need to achieve. You know, we can say that you know individuality. We can do what we like, but we are still living in a society. All right. We majority of us live in a big populous area with tons of services, and if there's no trust, if there's no understanding of your role in this society. There is no way this society can function. Anything goes, you know. There's no law. Law is is just like banking. Tr the trust in banking terms. Law is a very mechanical, very cold thing. Without human to give meanings to it, without people involving in it, it's useless. Just like banking as well. If it's just trust in terms of credit ratings, people can fake it or people can forge it. People can, um, you know, 
using that as their moral standard. You know, I pay my debt, so I'm a moralistic person. You know, it's not enough. It's not that. You know, it can be. Yeah. So we always need to focus on character building, human character. What kind of human are you? Right. What kind of mindset you have? Is this person reliable? And then you can talk about all these technology systems, you know, sophisticated policies, stuff like that. Those are tools at your disposal to either benefit people or hurt a lot of people, right? The double-edged sword, okay? A knife can feed people, a knife can kill people. Yeah. All right. So this one is a, you know, end of the ch part nine. It's very small, but to be honest, I don't see much difference part 9 and part 10 because I didn't expose to it too much but as I keep going I'm pretty sure I will be able to appreciate the um, categorization you know it makes it easier to understand what why is this you know chapter by chapter you know you read the book by chapter you are, you kind of get the ideas they're trying to convey so this part that we've been talking about is the concealed unwholesome deeds or concealed misdeeds you know um if you read the content, it's all about, you know, the mindset, the very subtle stuff, the jealousy, the, um, the, 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 you know, the lust, the greed, you know, and then the hatred, see? La, la, lust, you, greed, this is hatred, or rather annoyance, or, you know, like, I can't enjoy my stuff, you know, these people keep wanting their money back. If he does not exist, then I can have my, it's ignorance, it's, it's just being stupid, basically. And then um, this section, it's um, it's also malicious intent. I don't know how to translate it. That's why it took quite a while to understand it. Yo ying er, that means you have, if you read it very literally, it just means you have a malicious intent in hide, hiding. You know, no one, you can't see it. So this one is to hate, vilify, and curse those who do not acquiesce, acquiesce to one's shameless demands. Mm. Like you're asking for someone's help and people don't help you, you'd be like, ah, I hate you, or, you know, uh, uh, next time I'll do this, 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 this to you. That's a very terrible kind of an attitude because, you know, no one owes you anything. You know, you can, should not expect people to help you. Um, it's, it's hard not to ask for help, it's just when you ask for help, people don't 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 expect people will help you. Don't expect anything, all right? Always expect to you know, um, you know. Expect that is a grace from other people to help you. It's a it's a it's a it's a kind gesture from other people to help you. That way, you don't set your expectation like very high and or very. Um, because all this feeling came from came out from disappointment, like oh you didn't help me, or we I thought we are good friends or something you're supposed to help me. No, um, just because you have that relationship with them, of course it's naturally people want to help you, but it's not always the case. You know, everyone has a different kind of relationships. In our terms, everyone has a different kind of karma. They might have good relationship with you, they owe you nothing in the past life, so they won't specifically helping you or anything. If they do, it's because they do it out of their kindness. And usually people like that, they don't put it in your face and say, I help you. Right? They will just give you what you need and never ever take it for granted. Never ever have that mindset. So that's why you know this mindset usually comes out from those people who maybe expected other people to help them. Just because, whatever, I'm someone's son, I'm some famous something, something, something. Or I bought you many coffee, you should do that for me. Never do that. Alright? Always, you know, no matter what you do, never ask anything in return. Understand the law of karma. Understand that whatever you do will always have a reaction. Right? There's always a effect of your cost. So it, it will bear fruit. It's just that maybe with this time you can't have enough condition to cause this to happen. Maybe you know people really don't have the means to help you. You never know. Maybe they really do not have the time. And even they don't willing to help you, you know, never bring grudge, never bear grudge against them. It's um it's an unhealthy thing. Um 
like you know unable to satisfy your wants and this is not just between friends or some stranger between husband and wife between siblings between you know close people families spouses you know um we always have that kind of expectation towards other people all right and and we always have saying like you know whatever i want you should be able to get it for me and that is a very terrible attitude that is a very how to say damning kind of um kind of mindset that will set your whole life in a very miserable anger you know how karen came about this is how karen was made karen maker people were like expecting uh people to acquiesce to your demands uh, just because you have your sen- full sense of self you know full sense of um superiority that's very very dangerous because it's just going to be appear silly and miserable in other people's eyes and the big thing is you might cause that miserable attitude towards your children your family there's no point um uh doing that uh, this a real decent person a person with um wider horizon bigger horizon in life you know bigger than life in a sense they never you know ask without any reason you know ever unless they literally have no uh, way to do anything by themselves they will ask um for help and even they ask for help they always be grateful for anyone who willing to help and they never expect anyone um to help them just because they demanded it right so they understand like if he does not receive help that's in a way it's a fate it's 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 the timing and everything you know you do what you can in this situation but you know if if it's something you know you, you really need help you ask you always be grateful like even when it's a financial situation they will never go around places and actually trying to borrow money here borrow money there but sometimes there's situation you really really cannot control your family your children or you know sick or anything and you're already in the uh, lower rank of the income bracket and um you are really struggling then you have to bite the pride and actually borrow money and for a person who fall into this level of um poverty or situation it's very unfortunate but if one knows the karma coming law you will be able to you know help it's a difficult path but able to navigate it without giving rise to hatred which worsen the conditions i'm not saying that this condition can't be improved it ha- it can be improved but it cannot be done in a way of this sentences you know trying to push people into it you know uh, really fine people saying that you are rich or anything you don't help me you know everyone has their own karma everyone has their own path and for you to fall into that path there must be a reason and the last thing we want is to add more negative element in that difficult life already difficult life to worsen it and make it harder and harder and harder for you to recover from it so there's no need for um hatred or anything so yeah. mm. that's why one if one does not understand the teachings it's very hard to have that mindset you know, can you imagine you just you just don't have the concept like that you just don't know about this um you know this mindset of you know have a more relaxed attitude to his life and has have a more um less you owe me kind of mindset you know people the world owes me fun fun city so that don't that kind of hatred towards the world that is um either a good root person which person we have we have deep immersion into this teachings in the past life 
able to do it naturally. Normal people, they, they haven't came in contact with any form of positive teachings or pos- um, 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 proper mindset that, uh, guidance. Most of them will easily give in, cave into this hatred and, you know, become more and more trivial, petty, and then eventually narrowing their life happiness to this you know, scope, small scope, uh, small, 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 small scopes. Never cause, never bear grudge towards other people. Because holding grudge, you know, holding that kind of um, kind of heavy emotions is going to destroy you first, and then you might not even harm them. But most of that, the person who hurt get hurt the most is yourself. And even though they are not polite, they are very rude, they are very terrible, you might be very angry at the moment. Never hold it, you know, let it go. Um, understand the law of cause and effect, always go back there. It's a, it's a, um, it's the thing that, oh, not again, you're going to say this thing again, you know, you're going to tell me karma is, is all workings of karma. But no matter how emotional you are, there comes a day. There comes a day you need to sit down and look at it clearly, objectively. Otherwise, you're just gonna struggle. You're just gonna struggle. It's it's always gonna be like that. You're always gonna angry, fight, conflict, and what, leaving you more damaged, more broken than before, and then you only cave into even more anger, more fight, and then thinking the world is bad and you are you know you're only one of those weak teams ended up becoming the very person you don't want to be become the very person that caused you know that hatred that other people cause you so you become manufacturer of hatred yourself that is miserable and that's why no matter how strong the emotion is how terrible that is how pissed you are you know once you take a step back and able to see it clearly, the only way to get out of it is to bring yourself to senses. No matter how long it takes, you need to come to your senses because this is not a this is not something you can solve right now. It's like trying to what build a country or it's trying to build your um I don't know. It's trying to, it's trying to overcome a mountain of troubles. Say you're trying to go to the um, Mount Everest. Now you tr- you try to dig bore a hole through Mount Everest, going from one end to the other end. Our um, coming obstacle is thicker than Mount Everest. It's universal, astronomically huge. Buddha already mentioned in the sutra. Uh, our Yen Fu Ti Zhongsen, right? Yen Fu Ti is a Zhangputva. So basically, the sentient beings in this particular part of the world has um, the amount of karma equivalent to Mount Sumeru. And Mount Sumeru is not Mount Everest, contrary to what was believed in the past. It has to be astronomical. It's like maybe black hole or something. My whole point is saying that our karmic accumulation has been endless, and this is the um, this is the um, this is how much we have to deal with. So understand how much we have accumulated, how much burden, however fake it is, in a way of you know you're still in dream. These are all this is all a dream, but this is a dream you don't want to wake up from. However, unfortunately, that's the fact. You, If you really want to wake up from, I mean, what we're doing right now is trying to wake up from it. We are already on it. But you need to put more heart and like, patience into it. You can't just rush this. So hence, your 
emotions, your hatred, anger, and all that is part of your accumulation that you have already been doing. You've been doing that, just like Venerable Wooding saying that last Sunday. You've been doing that since you were born, or before you were born. You're carrying that habit into it. And of course, conditions help a lot in terms of your parents' teachings and all that. It, that's why we're here. We can change that. You know, that's the precious part about being human. It's, it's like the right condition for you to change, but it still takes a lot of effort and patience. Without patience, that you can't get anywhere. Like Buddha, right? He has a patience of a saint. <laughs> Literally, he's a saint. Um, or how, why? Like the same old story that we've been talking about, the, the cruel king, which is the past life of the Count Dinya. Count Dinya is the first student of Shaimuni Buddha, our historical Buddha. And he, and he was be, one of the first five monks being ordained under Buddha of our time. So Count Dinya was a cruel king in his past life, contrary to what he is now, which is an arahant. And he was, you know, very, very, cannot be reasoned with. He's a tyrant, right? He just do things like what he wants. Basically a 100% brilliant that you can see in every single movie. You know? now, of course, we took joy in seeing him being defeated, being killed, stuff like that, you know. The problem right now is this will not solve the problem. So how did Buddha solve the problem encounter with this piece of people? So what kind of cruel act he did? He went to this... Um, past life Buddha, uh, Buddha's past life, which is a saint of patience, literally, Ren Ru Xian Ren, okay, a saint of patience. He's, he's renowned for his, you know, he's renowned for his cultivation of patience in the way of, you know, patient against humiliation, able to withstand, able to um, not give rise to negative emotion in face of utmost humiliation, not just emotionally, but physically. So that's exactly what Count Inya's past life did to him. He carved his meat. He carved his skin one by one. It's like skinning him alive. It's a very graphic thing. And apparently, um, even you know, down to the skeletal level, he's still not hating on him. So that level of patience is required to be a Buddha. And because of his patience against this cruel, unreasonable act of... Um, this, uh, you know, king, uh, just because, you know, this sage, Buddha's past life, this sage was talk, um, surrounded by the king's um, palace mates. The king had a walk in the park, passed by where the um, sage was meditating. The mate surrounded the sage, very curious, just asking a very harmless question. What are you doing? Why are you sitting like this? Why are you so serene and calm? Why you look so peaceful? And then you just teach the Dharma, like meditation course in a sense. And this king just went there and of course he got jealousy and all that. Otherwise he won't be a tyrant. And he got all that rubbish in there and it gives rise to that you know, unreasonable act. And he commit this heinous crime against a sage, which is very bad. And even then, every single time he calf his meat, skin him, one part of his body, he asked him, do you feel pain? Do you feel hate? He said, I don't feel any hatred to you, you know. And then the more he did, you know, the more patient he is, of course, until, of course, his body cannot hold him, hold his conscience any further. Obviously, as a, as a sage, he can, he can just leave his body easily, like compared to the rest of us, who is very attached. Think of the end analogy I mentioned. Seven Buddha has passed, the end is still the end, all right? Think about ourselves as well. How long have we been stuck here? Um, pretty sure a very long time. And how many time of that period eh, are we born as human? How many time we actually fall into three lower realms? And how many more time we actually go to the higher realms? Right? Chances are the lower three realms is more than the higher realms. Right? The human realms is even harder to get into. So the whole point is saying that the patience is not number one thing. The Buddha has that level of patience that no one can comprehend. Right? Everyone saying that you harm me, I'm just going to fight back. Self-preservation. Right? You and I, everyone, no exception. Other than sage. So why why is that the case? 
because they're able to let go, purify, and that is not done by one lifetime, right? By the time he reaches this level, he already been practicing many, many lifetime of patience. It's not just suddenly being patient. There's nothing, no such thing. There's no such thing as suddenly, right? Like the sixth patriarch of the Zen Buddhism, Chinese Zen Buddhism, he's one of the most talented cultivators, and his condition is really, really, really harsh. You know, he relies on chopping woods. You know, Venerable Master Huineng, he relies on chopping woods to survive, to get those meager salaries, these coins, just enough to eat two meals or one meal per per day, and he has a mom at home to take care of as well. So. So that is all about patience. They are showing us how they train patience, that level of patience we cannot imagine. And the life is very poor, poverty, and you have to labor, toiling yourself every day. All right? And even when he already have the, shown the talent of being enlightened very quickly, because of his sharp, acute um, senses, in the sense of, you know, he able to pick up things very quickly, very intelligent, very wise. For someone who had never learned a word, he able to hear the sutra and able to recite the sutra. Uh, not just recite, understand the sutra without learning a single Chinese character in his life. Maybe a few, but maybe not like a proper learning. He can't even write. He can't even read. But he able to explain the core concept of whatever the lay Buddhist is chanting on. The Diamond Sutra, Jin Gang Jin. And then this is such a talent, once in a millennia kind of talent, right? And then he brought himself up there to the mountain. What do you do? Chopping more woods, cleaning, uh, uh, how to say, doing more menial labors, right? And it's a hard labor as well, you know. Stomp, stomp, stamping on the rice. I don't know what they do back then. It's just, you know, very, very toiling labors. And he did that for eight years. Before he, you know, gradually removed, sifting away what little bit of bad habits from his past life. And then what's left is clear and clean. And then he, he, he didn't just immediately become the venerable master Hui Nung. He was chased and hunted for 15 years. Because people can't understand that. This is out of conventional un- wisdom out of common sense. You know, how would someone never learn a, a word, you know, never being literate, a wood chopper, you know, in the in a in a very poor area, Guangdong, you know, the southern area. And back then the industry or the more developed is all in the north, Beijing and all the area. And and how can this you know barbarian in a sense, you know, from a rural area suddenly become one of the best top, brightest monk cultivators, you know, level equal to the Buddha. Basically, he sees what the Buddha sees. No, of course, no one can accept it. Very few people can accept it if they don't understand. You know, there's, a part, there's something called karma, which is very, it's beyond our one lifetime. And hence, he was chased down for 15 years, thinking, people thinking that he stole the fifth patriarch, the fifth uh, teacher, uh, the fifth Zen master's um, signet, which is the rope. This rope was passed down directly from Shyamuni Buddha, by the way. That rope is Shyamuni Buddha's rope. And it was passed down for already for like thousand years back then. Chuan Yi Boma. So those things are very precious, of course. And this is like literally a symbol of authority and respect. And of course he has to run away because otherwise he would get chased down Maybe, you know, be, keep chopping wood for the rest of his life. Of course not. So, and he ran away because of the fifth patriarch masters telling him to go. And and he has to hide among the hunters. Remember, back then, Buddhism was already, Chinese Buddhism is already practicing vegetarianism. And he has to hide among the hunters. So they hunt every day, skin the, skin the prey, and he has to cook for them as well. So he has to chop the meat, he has to marinate or whatever, and then cook it for them. Because if you want to stay in the team, you need to serve them. And you need to do your part. And so he, he hide among the hunter groups, which they roam around places, very hard to find. And then 
he all, what, all he can eat is the those vegetables they put in there at the side. He just pick it up and eat. Wo bian cai. That's how we. That's 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 that that kind of hardship we can imagine, right? Modern example, 2013, Master Hai Xian passed away at the age of 112. 112 years old. Uh, 112 years old. He was born in the um, Qing Dynasty era, era, 18 late 1800s. All right, and um, and he. Well, maybe early 1900s, and then he he just gone through all this cultural revolution, gone through all the you know troubles, you know, back in the very turbulent China. He went through every single phase until the modern version, right? So he able to sustain his monkhood, you know, preserve his precepts, and 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 and, and maintain very good relationship with everyone. Just by being himself and doing his job, his patient is patient of a saint. So, hence, what I'm saying is, understanding, exposing yourself to this kind of example helps you to ease a little bit of your difficulties. You know, people gone through all that kind of humiliations. You Now, to give you more context, because this is a modern person, a uh, person in our, our modern times, right? He was, you know, Master Hai Xian was. Uh, very, um, his father passed away because his bandit bandit was robbing like, in the nationalist China early time. You know, bandits are everywhere, lawless, literally like Wild Wild West, but worst. And it's lawless, and you know sometimes bandit just robbed the whole village, and his father was fending them off. You know, trying to buy times, and it was uh, everyone escaped. Because the bandit has a weapons and all that, and when they came back, the father was tied to the tree and lashed until he died. So, number one, that's the first tragedy he had. Before that, he's he's used. He still have a quite relatively, you know, middle class kind of a lifestyle in a sense. But afterwards, it's just getting worse. And his father was tied to the, the trees and get hit. And his father is well known, good people in the in the in the village. Everyone respects him. You know, he helps people a lot, and so he did the ultimate, you know, sacrifice in the sense, so that the bandits divert their attention to him. So he passed away, and when they came back, they realized it was surrounded by dogs or wolves, and they thought they're going to eat him because he's a corpse already. But when they tried to, you know, shoo the Wolves away using sticks to beat them. The wolves are like, rather than like trying to eat, he's actually standing guard, like standing vigil. You know, in U.S. they have the cemetery, the Arlington National Arlington Cemetery. Same, the wolf are standing vigil, rather than they realize the wolf are standing vigil for this kind person, rather than trying to eat him. So they are guarding these bodies from the um. From you know, other people, from from being you know mutilated, so everyone touched and cried at the spot, you know, because you know this person sacrificed his life to protect the village, and yeah, so everyone properly buried him. So he already encountered this kind of tragedy, and if you really really listen to it and experience it, it's one wave after another. His brother died in his in his arm because of sickness and everything. He just lie down. His father, just, his 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 elder brother, just died in his arms. Basically, his mother and himself have to make by with little just to survive every day. And he himself eventually, you know, um, he likes the Chan Guanyin Pusa as well. He was he has a very famous story about um, he went to. Back in the day, before the you know, before the tragedy happened, he and his cousin used to play around, and his cousin used to like like to steal his fruit or something in his garden, and then he cursed him and say, whoever he didn't know his cousin stole his watermelon or something, I don't know the fruit, vegetables, and he's like, whoever steal my vegetables will have a ulcer in their back or whatever the part I forgot the part. 
that will have ulcer in the in their body. And then he he keep like chanting Army of War. Instead of doing that, he keep chanting, "Whoever stole my vegetable will have ulcer in their body." And he yeah. literally made it into a reality. That one day, um, there is um, the you know his his auntie, which is mother of his cousin, um, his auntie just backed him like, "Stop, stop, stop, stop chanting this year." Actually, it's actually your it's actually your cousin that stole it. And he's like, oh my god, I didn't know my thought has such a powerful um that means render linear chang. Like people's thought can actually, you know, manifest into reality. You know, laws of attraction. A very strong concentration of thoughts. He's like really concentration. That means he has a very good, um, sharp, acute mind. So he um become monk after uh, like no no no, not that. He he realized the importance of having a good thoughts which is what we're trying to get at here importance of having good thoughts because thoughts actually affects you and people around you and not just people around you the physical world around you in a very subtle way but if you concentrate it long enough it becomes a it can alter it right and so what we're trying to get at is um whether um, variable himself after all this tragedy you know the war begins japan invade china back then is the flea and all that and before that he went and become a monk and learn from you know one of the enlightened master literally enlightened like like master who in an enlightened level and master told him once you understood what was being taught once you attain that he didn't say it directly he said once you understood never tell everyone never show it off do not show off what you have attained all right do not flaunt, do not show it. If this is not the time, this is not the era, you can do that anymore. Just do your job, do your just be a role model. Um don't say just do. This is not the era of saying, saying, saying. Uh, for his case, alright, for his context. And of course, his whole life he went through Sino Japanese war, he went through cultural revolution, he went through all this. But he still, you know, protect, preserving his monkhood. He never went back to be a lay Buddhist. You know, even the pressure was against religion back then. Uh, even Buddhism is not technically religion, but it was regarded as such. And it has the element of religion in it. Uh, and he is stuck. But he's not stuck. He's doing his job, he's planting his trees. He's, he's opening hectares and hectares of barren land into a fertile land you know, by his own bare hands. He choose pick a good land and then you start chopping the tree, I mean, clearing the trees and all that in the area and make way for the plantations. Because there's no government assistance, there's no subsidies. <laughs> no, there's no such thing, man. People can't even feed themselves. You under, like Back then in China, right, it was very... They, they just recover from one wave of political movement after another. They never have time to breathe, to be honest. They only started to get better in the 80s. So back then, what did he do? He, he literally had to, you know, he was sent to the labor camp. And of course, being a monk is not, not something new. He's not a monk that reads the books. He's the monk that actually plants. So he, he's used to do all these chores and all that. So he's very experienced. So, yeah. Don't do that, all right? Don't don't be, don't really fight people. Don't hate on people. His story is the story of legend, right? Um, let me tell you what, like how he conduct himself during the time. One of those long arduous years, he went to a mountain and he passed by a cave, and the cave actually has lots of cups, wolf cups. So he went by and realized there is a wolf coming out, approaching him. A adult wolf. He thought he's gonna die, and he's like cause and effect. I might have eaten him or something in the past life. I don't know. So I'm just gonna accept my fate. So the wolf bite his um, sleeves. He didn't bite him. Gently pull him into the cave, but he didn't know what it is. So he might. He thought that's it. So I'm just gonna chant Amitofo and go to Pure Land. He was taught Amitofo, even though he's in the Zen teacher's um, school. He's taught Amitofo because it's a better way because he does not uh, he's not literate and he's not able to to be honest Yu Zhu is also not literate but um, that time Amitofo was also was a very good uh, very easy so 
point is he's ready himself for the fate awaiting him. But turns out this is a male wolf asking his help to help this female wolf to give birth to another new cub. So the female wolf was on it was in labor. It's going in labor, trying to push out the baby, but had the troubles. So he's like, okay, let me chant Amitofo. And, and his chanting Amitofo is really concentrated. If you have heard of a story, like like the story about his cousin having ulcer because he concentrated his thought on that. So he concentrated his thought on chanting Amitofo so that you know the wolf can have a safe delivery. And the wolf, the female wolf, able to give birth to a healthy young cub without risking their life, her life. Uh, Mu Zi Ping An, right? The mother and the and the children they are safe, and so he went about his business because the wolf has a complete family, right? He just went out about his business, and then when he came back to his clearings, to his monastery, Lai Fu Si in in Nanyang, one of the province in China, south area, I think, um, he continued his business of you know as a monk and clearing out the land and stuff like that you know. and then suddenly the wolf a few days later the wolf came in to the border of his um, temple and dropped a few cups of honey as a way to say thanks so it's just showing us that animal, even animal knows the rules you know always you know say thank you and show your gratitude to those who help you let alone humans um yeah, so this is what it should be happening. This is how you, you know, avoid creating enemy, rather make friends, and literally by being pure, sincere, and actually trying to help them. Never create enemy, no matter how small that creature or the other person is, no matter how it's an animal or anything, right? So let alone human. So yeah. Always practice patience, practice, you know, wisdom. With patience, you will have wisdom because there's no wisdom without patience. You can't, you can't see anything clearly. If your mind is clouded with agitation, hatred, you know, you can't see things clearly. You, you're just going to blind yourself into this reactionary stuff. You know, that person's doing this, I'm going to do that. And then that person's going to do this, I'm going to do that. You're forever being pulled by them and they also forever being pulled by you so two of them trying to like beat each other out in the end they just wasting their life on this um, not going anywhere going downwards not anywhere getting worse and worse and worse it's not worth it um, just yeah don't do this to yourself don't do this, don't do this to the others don't do this to yourself you know in in, in face of you know people not helping you and stuff like that understand the law of one cause and effect no one owes you anything we are our own master of course we are also our own arbitrator of fate in the end and I'm saying it in the very literal sense of the word arbitrator of your fate you literally dictate your own fate it's just it's a long process of how this came to be it's not something you just think and do you can do that, but you need to clear all these obstacles out of the way. You know, there are many ways to clear obstacles. You know, right now, right here, you can use this kind of teachings to help you to get by your day to day so that you don't give rise to all these poisonous thoughts, uh, maliciousness. Those things were misguided. Um, and to do so, you need to understand the consequences of having that, and which is what we talk about. Um, you know, and then also the positive of not giving rise to hatred, the positive of being patient, being restrained, and positive of um, you know taking it one by one, step by step, every step, every day, small little step, baby steps. Um, those are the foundation of patience, able to you know see things clearly every time. Small annoyance is the best super starting point. You know things that annoys you. Ignore that. Don't don't allow the sensation to get to you. Always be patient. Slow down a bit. See things clearly, and then move forward, forward, forward. Eventually, you get more confidence, and you can get 
then the test will come. Literally in your face, kind of uh, all, all sorts of tests will come. And then you'll be like, your patient will be tested even more and more and more. And to have the concept of, I want to tolerate you is already bad. It's already like disqualified. Renwu Keren in Chinese, right? Saying, currently is interpreted as, I cannot take it anymore. I'm going to uh, confront. In actual words of Renwu Keren, it, it came from someone enlightened. It means you being patient until there's nothing to be patient about. There's nothing to be patient against. Right? You tolerate until there's nothing to need to, 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 to use the word tolerate. There's nothing to tol um, needing tolerate to. You know? it's, it, is what, it, is, it is how it is and we need to see things as it is. You know, rather than saying that this should be, should not be and why isn't it this, why isn't it that. It is what it is and understand cause and effect. Navigate through that wait for the opportunity. opportunity opportunity comes up improve it if there's no opportunity be patient you know if you really can't take it retreat tactical retreat take, take a few steps back you really cannot afford to bog down into that kind of conflict retreat take a lower stances lower profile and then when times come you have more energy you have more how to say your karmic burden is lesser, either lack of any words. You feel less heavy, then you're able to advance in this situation better, wiser, smarter. That's how it is, right? If you can't get what you want at this moment, understand that you might not have the enough fortune to have it, or you might not have been cultivate giving enough for you to receive help. So understand karma, respect the karma, respect the wishes of other people, retreat. You know, even though that retreat means that you have one less meal to eat, or you have worse, um, maybe you, you need to be you know, penalized by law because you might do something not right, or um, you're not able to pay the rent or stuff like that. Uh, so whatever it is, do it right. Um, yeah, take it. It's something not popular, you no? Know? We can't just say that. It's just the alternative is to blame other people for not helping us. Like, why is the government not doing this? Why is this? Why is this? You know, friend not doing this? And I, I used to be very good. You know, I used to buy a lot of things for you, and now you don't do this. So all this thought will come out, but it's just that don't entertain it too much. Don't allow it to take over. It's very dangerous because it, this is the path where maybe this is a turning point. If you're able to maintain that sort of proper, healthy attitude, you know, I, 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 I can't get it now, but I will get it. I can't do it now, I will get it, right? I'm getting it, but I'm just taking it step by step. Now I cannot go in front, I have to go back because there's a wall in front of me. I need to see things clearer. I'm too close to this, right? Whatever that is, career, relationship, or... Um, Financials, problems, health, health problem as well. Yeah. Okay. I think that's it. We'll stop it here.